Yo, what up? Um, I'm gonna do my review of uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, I was gonna do a prediction video uh, yesterday, but just didn't get around to doing it. Um, so I'm doing my review. Um, this probably won't be uploaded until Monday morning or morning afternoon. But um, as a whole, I thought Royal Rumble was a good show. I thought it was an enjoyable show. Um, <coughs> first off, Intercontinental Title Match, Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose. This was a great opening match to start off the pay-per-view. Uh, these guys went through some nasty spots. They put their bodies out on the line. Um, definitely one of the better matches for the Intercontinental title, specifically, that I've seen in quite a while um, <coughs> on WWE television. Matter of fact, I, in my opinion, I think this feud between Ambrose and Owens was one of the best feuds I've seen in a while over the IC title because um, it felt like they gave these guys some time and they really they had a plan thought out with this feud and these guys were going somewhere in this feud um, instead of just being oh just two random guys fight for the IC belt whoever wins wins and the winner will do whatever with loser will just drop and till we come up with something else um, I didn't get that at all with these two so great match <coughs> um, Ambrose Last man standing, defense the IC title. Uh, next match was the tag match between the Usos and New Day. Match was all right. Didn't care much for this match. Uh, New Day came out on top. Not surprising that they won. I mean, they literally, WWE just literally threw this match on the card um, on last week's SmackDown. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm watching SmackDown. They're advertising saying Usos versus New Day for the tag titles. I'm saying to myself, wait, you're advertising this now? Like, literally... There's been no build and no sort of interaction or physical contact between both teams. So I'm like, you're definitely just throwing this on there just for the hell of it because you have nothing else to think of. Um, so New Day win. Uh, that's not surprising just because, like I said, there's real, there was no build between the two teams. Um, Kalisto, next match was Kalisto and uh, Alberto De Rio. This match was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought the right person went over, the right person won. However, my biggest gripe and complaint about this is not the match per se, but WWE and how they're trying to perceive um, Kalisto. Multiple times they've made um, a lot of references to Rey Mysterio and, you know, saying, uh, you know, Rey, just like Kalisto is an underdog and, you know, he's fight, he has to fight, you know, he's been an underdog fighting all his life. So was Rey Mysterio, and it's like, can you let the stars of today be themselves without you having to draw a parallel line between them and continuously comparing them to another, you know, superstar before them? Because after a while, I think that becomes a problem, because if the superstar that you are comparing, if they don't meet the requirements or, you know, if they don't fit the mold of the superstar or legend that you're comparing them to in the fans eyes fans are going to see through that fans are going to backlash fans are going to end up booing your talent especially if it's a baby face they're going to end up booing your talent or not giving too much crap about them if they don't meet the expectations of the superstar that you're comparing them to so i think that's very detrimental and WWE really have to be careful with that I really don't understand this obsession of trying to make him the next Mysterio. Just make him the first Kalisto. I mean, they tried that with Sin Cara a couple of years back. The original Sin Cara. They tried to make him the next Rey Mysterio. That flopped. That went horribly. And they're doing it again with Kalisto. It's like, does every luchador come in through that, through WWE, have to be compared to Mysterio? Let him be himself. Just please. Um, but... That was my only complaint about that. But other than that, the match was, was fine. The right person won. Next, we had uh, Becky Lynch and uh, Charlotte. Uh, match was all right. However, I got a kick out of uh, Ric Flair uh, kissing uh, uh, Becky Lynch. I thought that was hilarious. Some people thought it was disgusting. I thought it was entertaining and funny as hell, especially when she slapped him in his face and his reaction to her to him slap, slapping her. Hilarious stuff. Um, Charlotte goes over. Um... Sasha Banks, my baby Sasha Banks, comes out, makes a surprise, return, um, 
and the crowd is electrified and they are marking out and chanting Sasha. Sasha kicks out Be- kicks Becky Lynch out of the ring. Um, she kind of looks like she's kind of, you know, congratulating Charlotte maybe and holding her hand out. I'm thinking I'm going to form the BFFs here on, you know, the main roster. But to no avail, Sasha ends up, you know, taking a licking on, on, on Charlotte. Banks puts her in the bank statement and makes Charlotte tap. Or actually, Charlotte didn't tap. But she had her in the bank statement and was kind of torturing her. Picks up the Divas title. Ric Flair goes, woo. Think, I'm thinking he's going to grab maybe Sasha Banks and make out with her, which would have been even more hilarious. Anywho, uh, you got to figure that's going to be a WrestleMania match. I predict it. Maybe not even predict, I should say. But I said three months ago, or right around when Charlotte had won the world title and when she was kind of turning heel, I said that if they're going to do a Divas title match at WrestleMania, they need to do it with Charlotte and Sasha Banks because those two have great chemistry. They they can go. To me, they're two-thirds of the best women wrestlers on that entire main roster, the other being um, uh, uh, Paige. What well, brain fart. The other being Paige. Um, and it looks like that's what we're going to do. Next up is the Royal Rumble. Uh, as a whole, I thought the Royal Rumble match was good. There are some kinks in the armor of the Royal Rumble that I'm going to get to in a second. However, AJ MFN Styles. AJ Styles debuted tonight. Surprisingly, entry number three, and it was awesome. I was elated. I was glad. Uh, The whole Florida uh, arena was lit up like a mother. Besides Sasha Banks, AJ Styles, I would say, had one of the biggest pops and chants of the entire night. Um, I expected people to know who AJ Styles was because, I mean, Florida, that's that's TNA's backyard. That's that's TNA's one of their largest markets. That's where TNA, you know, made their name in the Florida, you know, territory or area. So I just expected people to know him, but I didn't expect that many people in that arena all all those people i mean casual fans i guess you could even say knew who aj styles was and chanted his name it was awesome and he lasted there for for quite some, for quite a minute too i think uh, j cole said that my, not j cole the rapper not j cole michael cole said that he lasted for like a good 28 minutes about a half hour he lasted that was pretty cool uh sammy Zayn also made a surprise return onto the main roster he threw out kevin owens who throughout AJ Styles. So no better guy to throw out AJ Styles than Kevin Owens. That's cool. And then Sami Zayn throws out uh KO, which awesome. Um so even though his feud for the IC title or his chase for the IC title may be over, at least Kevin Owens now has something else he can get into. So that's that's great. You know, at least he's not gonna be stuck in limbo. His next thing is Zayn. Um, now, getting to the nitpicky things about this Royal Rumble match. That Again, I don't want to say I'm nitpicking, but I just don't understand some of the booking choices. Now, in terms of the conclusion of the Royal Rumble and how it ended, I was fine with that and who won and everything. I'll get to that first. I mean, second. But first, uh, Royal R- Roman Reigns. When it comes to Roman Reigns and booking this man for just a simple Royal Rumble match, WWE cannot seem to get it right at all. He was fine. He was fine. He was entry number one. He eliminated maybe, what, two or three people. But Roman Reigns was only in there for like a good, what, 15, maybe 20 minutes. And then after that, the League of Nations come out. And the League of Nations pull Roman Reigns from underneath the ropes. And they're all giving him, you know, each of, each one of them giving him kicks to the head. Then Rusev does a frog splash through the table. And then Roman Reigns gets carried away by the, uh, by the uh, referees. And we don't see Roman Reigns for, you know, a good, you know, three quarters of the Royal Rumble. I mean, like literally. And then he comes back, but I'll get to that in a sec. It made no sense to me at all um, because you had that. To me, it was it was too much. It was too much and it was too distracting because you, you have the Royal Rumble match going on in itself. 
Then outside, you have all the shenanigans going on with Roman Reigns and, and, and the League of Nations. And then you had Coffee Kingston, who was on the shoulders of Big E. And by the time we got back to the Rumble match, Coffee was already eliminated. And they didn't even address that until like way later. Like, oh, yeah, Coffee Kingston got eliminated because Jericho eliminated him. And, and he threw off, he did something to New Day. And Big E failed, which caused you know, coffee to fall, and so that's how Coffee Kingston got eliminated. It's like, well, what the hell? It's like too much was going on, and I don't like that. Like, the Royal Rumble match is all you need. You don't need all these outside distractions. So that was the one thing that kind of ticked me off a little bit, because it's like, it's too much going on at the same time. Do you want me to pay attention to the Rumble match, and who's getting eliminated, or you want to pay attention to Roman Reigns? Like, it's like, what's going on? But to backtrack, so after Roman Reigns, he comes back, okay, and this dude pretty much like no sales. Like you wouldn't be able to tell that he got kicked in the head multiple times and got smashed through a table by a by a bear because he comes out when he comes when he does come back towards the end of, or close to the end of, of the of the match. He's like running through people left and right. It's like who thought of that? Who thought of booking Roman Reigns like that for this match? I thought that was the one of the sour things in this Rumble match in particular. Because to me, you coming in at number one, number one entry, and you having to last an hour, hour and a half, however long the Rumble match itself is, and having to go through 29 competitors one by one and throw them over the ropes and trying to save your momentum and save your energy so that you can stay as champion, that enough in itself is a challenge. You dragging me out after being in the Rumble match for the first 15 minutes and you dragging me out, you beat me up a little bit and I'm gone for like the majority of the rest of the Rumble match. Hell, that's doing me more favors than it is doing anything against me because I'm resting. I only spent 15 minutes in the first match, in the first part of the match, and I'm chilling on ice, resting now. I mean, I may be a little bit sore from getting, you know, kicked in the head and whatnot, but I'm cool. I can rest. You know, I've recovered, so to speak, you know. Or if they were going to beat him up, they could have just thrown him back in the ring. That would have made better sense. But to have Roman Reigns literally again, like last year, where he just kind of stood in the corner somewhere and didn't participate at all in the Rumble match. Again, Roman Reigns literally like skips almost an entire Rumble match uh, completely. And it made no sense to me at all. I really did not like that. Um, so that's my little gripe towards that. Now, as far as Triple H winning the title belt, I have no problem with this. Uh, people that bitched about this, they need to stop. Um, you you had to see this comment. Everyone saw this comment. I mean, TLC, the ending, concluding match of TLC. It, it the writing was on the wall. You knew Triple H was going to screw Roman Reigns. You knew the possibility of Triple H being champion was pretty darn high. Uh, for all storyline intents and purposes, it makes sense. Roman Reigns annihilated. Triple H to TLC. It makes sense for Triple H to take the belt. And yes, it may set up a predictable match at WrestleMania with Roman Reigns main eventing and Roman Reigns winning the belt. But at the end of the day, it's a new star they're trying to put over. And before you say, well, Roman Reigns was put over when he won the title on Raw against Vince McMahon. No. Roman Reigns has not fully broken that glass ceiling. And the person to do that with is Triple H. Um, you know, it's one thing to have Vince McMahon, but I'm talking about an in-ring competitor, an in-ring top heel. There is nobody on that roster, a top heel, that could be form not only form a viable threat, but that can put over Roman Reigns other than Triple H. I'm sorry. Sheamus doesn't do it. Vince McMahon is good, but at the end of the day, Vince McMahon is not a wrestler. So there's nobody better right now than Triple H. So I'm fine with Triple H winning. My only thing is, is that for the future reference, I hope that WWE kind of stops this because this literally makes the second person in the last four or five years to have won the Royal Rumble twice. Um, Roman Reigns was the first person, I think, when he won it last year. He was the first new person to win it in the last maybe five years. Because before that, the last person to win the Royal Rumble, I think, was like Sheamus back in 2010. Because then John Cena won the Royal Rumble. Then Batista won the Royal Rumble. Um, you know, 
too many of the same people who've won it before are winning it again. This one, I understand they have to sacrifice for that for storyline purposes. It makes sense to have Triple H. But for future reference, um, they, they gotta they gotta calm their tits on letting people who won the Royal Rumble before win it a second time. They really have to calm their tits on that. Um so all in all, I thought Royal Rumble was a good show. Uh I give it a B, B minus, eight out of ten. Um one other thing I kind of think about, which I'll get to in a separate video, um, Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. I'm not sure how I feel about this going into WrestleMania or that being a WrestleMania match because that would mean Bray Wyatt will be losing to Brock Lesnar for the, for the third WrestleMania in a row. Uh, Bray Wyatt will be losing because out of all the weeks, the Wyatt the Wyatt family clan have been docking and dominating Brock for weeks. Brock ain't putting over Bray at WrestleMania, you know, if if they're doing that. So, but yeah, I'll get that before a separate video. But you guys let me know what you think um, about Royal Rumble. I want to hear your thoughts in the box as well. Comment, subscribe. Peace.